So today we are talking about oil spills in the Gulf of Finland. How much traffic do we actually have on the Gulf of Finland? Uh, at the moment we have about 20 oil tankers which are now moving around in the Gulf of Finland and, and every year we have about 8,000 oil tankers which visit the area. Then we have about 11,000 passenger vessels and, and 23,000 other, other vessels. The direction in, in, the, in the traffic is is usually from the north to the to the south to the main basin, but there is then especially for the oil tankers the west east direction is an important one. So the Gulf of Finland freezes over in the winter time. What would happen if there was an accident in in the winter time? Winter time accident is actually perhaps the most difficult one technically. It's very difficult to to get the oil back to the vessel to collect really the oil oil goes between the rock between the ice and and b below the ice and and gets mi get mixed to our mixer which is not technically easy once you start to try to get up the up the oil so that's not so not so easy usually people think that the worst scenario case is the accident with the, which takes place in the in the winter time so that oil and, and the ice get mixed. But actually my opinion is that the worst scenario is that the accident takes place now in the archipelago when the birds are migrating to the area and the spawning time of the fish is starting and, and which is biologically active time. That is actually to my mind the worst scenario. Isn't it so that the coastline here along the Gulf of Finland varies very much? I mean, here along the Finnish coast it's very rocky. How does this affect the oil combating? Yeah, this is, uh, describes a typical feature of the, of, the, of the coastal areas here in, in, the, in the northern part of the Gulf of Finland. We can see that even small amounts of, of oil spread effectively along, along the rocks and and there does not need to be that much oil at all to create a big spill. Then you have to take one rock and clean it individually on the, from the both sides and, and go, go through all the rocks like, like this. So it's an enormous amount of work what is involved in that, this kind of activity. On the other side of the Gulf of Finland, you have the Estonian coast, which is full of beaches. How would you handle an oil accident on the sandy Estonian coast? Yes, the Estonian coast is actually a very different case than the, than the Finnish coast. Here we have a, quite a typical sample from, from the Estonian coast, and, and like we can see, it's, it's sandy mainly. The oil as such behaves so that it goes easily in to the sand, but stays in the in in the surface, depending on on the type of the oil. If it is crude oil, then it's it stays, stays more in the surface than than the other other types of oil. Then then we have, of course, in the case of of uh, Estonia, we can use because the coast is such that it's almost a direct line. There is no similar mosaic structure like in the in the Gulf of Finland uh, in the Finnish side. So we can basically think that we can use some some uh, wheel technologies, for example, tractors or diggers, which take them part of the of the oily material away. How should the resources be allocated? Basically, you can allocate the resources either to the actions which take place after the oil spill or then to the actions which take place before the spill. The after, after uh, spill resources is, for example, that you buy a new, one new vessel to the oil combating fleet, which Finland has already. Actually, so we, we have just finalized a, a, a study which shows that, that at the moment it's much more economically effective to use money for the preventive actions to try to prevent the oil spills than to use money for the actions which take place after the spill.